Welcome back to Grow Your Impact, Income, and Influence, the number one show helping you reach millions, whether that's millions of followers, millions of subscribers, millions of people, or millions in your bank account. We are here to support you. And today, I've got a star. It's not just any star. Her name is Esty Star. She helps business owners who are kind of in that beginning phase, zero to $100,000. She has several different things. She has a group program. She has a one-on-one. She has something called marketing magic. We're going to get into all of that. But if you know about the large consulting services out there, Deloitte, things along that nature, think about that. But for the small time entrepreneur that is just getting started, zero to 20 employees looking to break six figures this year. If that's you, you're going to want to pay attention to this podcast. SD, how are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous. Awesome. So I'm going to let all the viewers in on a little secret. You just got back from one month in an incubator in Guatemala at the foot of a volcano perfecting your business and learning how you can serve people. How awesome was that trip for you? It was insanely amazing. It was a active volcano. There are actually three surrounding the area where I was staying. One was active. So watching it spew lava every night, probably one of the highlights of my life. (laughs) That's pretty cool. Um, We're going to unpack some of the stuff you did with business there, but just the fact that they put an incubator there. Um, And you were one of the lucky people invited to go because of what you do. So obviously you've had your consultancy for a while. Um, You've helped train consultants. You've helped hundreds of people reach success, probably thousands of people. But where did all of this start for you? Like kind of take us back to the beginning. How did you learn how to do this stuff? Because it's so many people are like struggling and they're looking to get started. We were talking before the show, you said, you know, there's so much misinformation out there, but you've helped so many people find success. How did you learn the right path? So back in 2011, I was actually working as a CIO of a multinational nonprofit, loved my boss, loved my job, had flex time, which was really important to me. I have three little kids at that time. I now have five less little kids. And uh, I just had this crazy dream. I wanted to create a consulting firm for small business owners. This is my twenties. And uh, I just, it was this burning dream. And I, I did not have any experience in consulting. I had gone to business school. I'd been running businesses profitably since I was 10 years old. Um, so it's, it's in my blood. It's in my being. It's who I am but I'm a strategic risk taker. And as the primary supporter of my growing family, I wasn't going to just leave my job and go start a business. And uh, the universe decided that that was the plan. So they hired this middle manager who was super toxic, made my life utterly miserable. And uh, there's just this one day that, you know, I remember the middle manager who became in charge of me, He took my staff. He took my trips. I was supposed to go to Argentina, Moscow. And he was like, your trips are my trips. Your staff is my staff. And I was just like, you know, I'm the new leaving person. Bye. And it was a little more complicated than that. But um, I mean, that's pretty cool. The I have, I think most entrepreneurs have like a very similar moment where they were working for somebody else and they were just like, nope. I'm, I'm out. So you yeah. left. I left. I was terrified. I had no idea where our money was going to come from. Um, my now ex-husband was still studying and I just knew I couldn't stay. I wasn't the human I wanted to be. I wasn't the mother I wanted to be. And I was miserable. You know, it was really, really hard. And I've had many times in my life since then also where the universe is like, out, get out of here. And I'm like, where do you want me to go? It's like, you'll find out. Go. <laughs> I'm like, where do you want me to go? Um, And it's scary, right? I didn't know how to, I have been running businesses profitably forever as side hustles. I turn anything Mm -hmm. into a side hustle. I can turn anything into money, but to turn something into a full income, I never done that. And I just had this crazy dream. And uh, I remember I was sitting with this headhunter, former McKinsey consultant. So, you know, my idol. And I remember she was, interviewing me for other C-level positions. And she even sent me on some solid interviews. I remember she looked me in the eye and she's like, Esty, what's the dream though? Like, what do you really want to do? And I was like, she's going to help me. 
right? Like she can tell me how to do this because I want to be like her. And so I look and I'm like, I want to do small business consulting. I have this dream. There's all these people. I hear them in the cafes and it's even more now, right? But I'm like, and I hear them going like, how did you should sell your cupcakes for a dollar? It'd be such a great business. And I'm like, oh my God, like I can help you. (laughs) Like I know how this works. I went to business school. I breathe business. I read psychology books for fun because they're marketing textbooks. Like this is everything I do. And uh, I told him like, this is my dream. And she looks at me. She's like, SD, no one will take you seriously. No one will hire you. You need another 20 years C-level experience before anyone pays you for your advice. Interesting. Um, yeah, I was, I remember being totally devastated because I'm out there, I'm looking for a job. I'm trying to help support my family. I've already left my other job. I'm running out of time. We're running out of savings. And I confide my dream in this woman who I idolize for support. And she's like, yeah, no, (laughs) that's not how the game works. And I remember coming home that day and just crying, crying, like the sun streaming in the window, tears streaming down my face. And I'm like, but it's my dream. It has to work. And, you know, seven years later, full service, multinational creative consulting firm, clients and staff on six continents, 10 time zones, 22 people on staff, I think at that point, Um, thousands of people serviced through our consultancy and our online program division. And yeah, so she was wrong. People, lots and lots of people paid me for my advice, actually, because it was good because they kept finding more and more success. And one of the I'll give you three of my favorite tools, right? Okay, one hang is, on. Yeah. Oh, hang on. We're going to come back to tools. You want to come I back got to more tools? questions okay. about the story. You got it. Like, I, like first off. I'm just off, very practical. I'm like, I'll tell you the story and I'll tell you how to do it. And I'll tell you how it works. It's all good. It down. <laughs> well, if you guys are listening and you're like, well, I want to know how she did it. Don't worry. We'll get there. You also, you have a challenge that you're offering people for free right now through your free gift, right? I want to make sure people know about that. Um, sdstar.com slash free gift. It's in the show notes underneath, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it will be in the description. And that does change from time to time too, right? So sometimes it's a challenge, sometimes it's something else. Right now, the three-day marketing success challenge is there. Uh, We're going to be putting a paywall on it soon. And so if you go to sdstar.com slash free gift, There's always something cool there. We've got 167 promo strategy guide. We've got a, what's your marketing personality? Because we we like change it up. So you can always check back to see what's hanging out there. And at the time of this recording, you've got the three-day marketing success challenge available for free for a limited time only. Awesome. So one other thing that I want to call out that I heard you say is you started your first business when you were 10. Um, One of the common things... I've seen across interviewing entrepreneurs is that we all started at a really young age. So what was the first business that you did? So surprisingly, surprisingly, because I've fallen in love with Latin America in the last two years, but I'd never been there before in my life. My first business at 10 years old was selling Mexican string name bracelets. All right. They were very trendy in my elementary school, these custom name bracelets that... Um, they're, they're made with string. You can still get them in Mexico. Um, they're not as trendy now in the States as they were when I was a kid. And uh, yeah, I figured out how to make them. I figured out how to sell them. And I also, I found my original paperwork. I had typed out order forms on a typewriter. I calculated my cost of goods sold, even though my parents paid for my materials. I ran that like a real business. I did marketing at the local stores. Um, and I was on the edge of hiring other kids to make the bracelets because once I figured out how the all operation ran, I was like, okay, I don't need to make these though. That's awesome. Like, I love it. I did not, I didn't do anything with cost of goods sold. I, mine was much simpler. I just went around and mowed yards and raked leaves and did odd jobs, but that's like that. It, the fact that you did cost of goods sold, cause I, I did the Jolly Ranchers, right? Like I buy the big bag of Jolly Ranchers for three bucks mm-hmm. and go sell each one for a quarter. And I was like, I triple my money. This is great. Um, but I couldn't sell enough of them. Right. So throughout the years, what other businesses are memorable to you? Like, I love like take going down memory lane. What else did you do that sure. was like, memorable what else have I done? On the way? um, 
I've taught hip hop dance exercise classes, leased a studio, got the people, designed the dances. I've done my own medical billing business. I did hairstyling specifically for curly hair, which if you're seeing me on video, took me a while to figure mine out. And then I figured out other people's. Um, uh, what else have I done? I've done um, like admin and filing work. I did independently for a while for various businesses. What okay. So you're pretty organized. Like I get right away that yeah. you are like, yeah, your eyes just lit up. You're like, oh, you love spreadsheets, don't you? You like I love, love spreadsheets. Oh my God. I think in, in like grids and files, there's a new program that's probably not that new, but it's called Notion and it's very up and coming. I'm telling you, it's like the inside of my brain laid out on a screen. I'm in love with it. I just keep taking the things in my brain and putting them in my Notion. I'm like, is my brain on a screen? It's so great. I love so that's it. That's how the inside is... of my brain looks. It looks like a cross between Notion and an Excel spreadsheet. Notion is... um. I, I won't go too far down this rabbit hole. Like I've played with it a little bit. It's a little bit too complex for me. Not really, but um, I just use, I use to-do list and then mm -hmm. I use a notepad and it's like, get all the stuff out of my head. And then my VA yeah. actually organizes all of it. She's amazing. Um, so Notion is exactly, the truth is it's not a cross because Notion, you embed spreadsheets. I just embedded a database yeah. in my Notion yesterday, two of them. That is my brain. Oh. Notion is a program made by someone who has my brain who figured out the coding to put it on a computer. Awesome. So if you guys are listening to this and you're like, what is this thing? It's a productivity tool. It's like beyond Asana or Basecamp. It can help with that, but it also does other stuff. Not project management. No, no. So it's, I'll tell you what it does. not It's not like ClickUp or Asana. That's not how I see it for me. It's like Process Street or... It's incredible for storing information and mm -hmm. accessing that storage. And what I like about it is I feel that it doesn't replace any other tools specifically, maybe Process Street, but not even. It's more of a aggregate tool where you can kind of pull because you have things everywhere and you have like a little note here and a little thing there. And it's like, where can you put all of the things and link to all the things and in a way that's super orderly that you can just like click, 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 click and see it all in one place. It's all there. It's all there. And I see it more like that, like a giant, it's just a giant drop down list of a drop down of a drop down where you can put, I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm just, you know, this is what love feels like. Awesome. All right. So let's jump back to if people are just getting started in business, because a lot of people wanted like a lot of consultants, I know a lot of people who help businesses grow and scale, they all want the six figure, like to million dollar to $2 million clients. You specifically picked zero to a hundred K zero to 20 employees. So you've had a lot of time and a lot of experience helping that crowd. So if you were to give them a one, two, three, like do this, then do this, then do this, what would it be? I mean, we were talking before the break and this is what I want to call out. You you said like there is so much misinformation out there right now. We are basically at like the start of the self-employment boom, in my opinion, like we're going to see more and more people entering that phase of, or I don't we're know. We're at phase. the early majority. If you studied Malcolm yeah. Gladwell's curve, I feel that we're at the early part of the early, um, of the, are we at the early, yeah, we're at the early majority. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, we've crossed innovators a while ago. We've crossed early adopters over the last, I would say about decade. Right. And we're mm -hmm. into the early majority after that comes late majority stragglers. And then, you know, the people who are like, hey, at the very end. yeah. Yeah. And, and it's so funny because when I started this, no one did business consulting or business guidance for small business owners. There was this attitude. And again, we're going back 12, 14 years there was this attitude of like a small business owner either has what it takes or they don't. They're either a natural or they're not. And that's just not true. This is a skill you can learn and it's a skill you can learn, right? So it, it's both yeah. sides, marketing, business, all of it is a skill you can learn like any other skill, like any other muscle. There's information, there's training, there's practice, and you learn more as you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I see happening now is there's a lot of these microwave businesses coming up as opposed to oven businesses. So if you ever try to warm pizza up in a microwave, 
gets all like chilly and gummy and dried out because the microwave doesn't actually heat up the pizza. Microwave heats up the water molecules in the food. All right, so microwave hack, little cup of water in the microwave with your thing, game changer. Pizza, chicken, everything. Yeah, because you got the okay. extra water in there and the extra moisture, but still it will not stay hot as long. Yeah, you eat something in the microwave, you better eat it right away because it didn't actually heat up the food. You put the pizza in the oven, it takes a little longer, that'll stay hot a lot longer and it'll taste better. And what I see a lot now are these like quick fix businesses, these like magical thinking businesses. And we have a program marketing magic, which is different, not magical thinking, just magic. Um, where it's like point, click, says it's that easy. Yes and no. Right. So some of the biggest misinformation is like, let's make an online program, be millionaires next month. Oh, it didn't work for you. Must be you work for the other people in our class. Well, it's that's just, the. It's not true. It's, it's not true. Okay. The. Um, yeah. I mean, we could. I think we could probably go back and forth on that for a long time. Like the, the idea or the number of people that I've I've had come that are like, why didn't why didn't why am I not making a million dollars or why am I not making a hundred thousand dollars? Well, you've been in business for three months. Like. Yeah, but I, I expect it. It's like, I think the, I, I listen to a lot of different people and some of the people that I really respect have said things. And I it, like, if you look at college, you go to school for five years to make $60,000. If you're lucky when you graduate, if you took that same amount of time and applied it to entrepreneurship, then at the end of five years, you'd probably be making mid six figures. But you have I would say to- easy half a million if you dedicated it, if you dedicated yourself the same way you do to university. Right. Study, learn, explore, grow, test, iterate, study, learn, explore, grow, test, iterate, study, learn. Do that for five yeah. years, you're at at least half a million dollars. At least. Well, and what most people do is they look at it as like, oh, well, this is not hard. And, and it's not. Hard. See, the thing is, there is a grain of truth in every lie that stands because a full lie has nothing to stand on. It's just transparently wrong. Yeah. Anyone who's watching the video can see it's light outside on my end. This is not a Zoom background. I'm in my office. That's real sunlight. If I would say to you, it's dark, that has nothing to stand on. It's dark outside. There's nothing to stand on. Right. There's got to be a grain of truth in it somewhere. And so the grain of truth is that business is easy takes a minute. There are things to learn. Yes, anybody can do it. But that that brain switch of like, well, anybody can do it and it's easy, which means I can do it by next week. That's just not true. Is there someone who could do it by next week? Yeah. There are a lot of 10-year overnight successes. A lot. Pretty much every overnight success you see is a 10-year overnight success. They've been working at it for about 10 years now. And poof, over... There is a um, a famous pop musician who's like 17. And I remember thinking of the 10-year overnight success rule. And she just like came on the scene. It was like almost overnight success, She's like 17. And you would be like, oh, yeah, Asdi, where's your 10-year rule? We'll read your backstory. She's been doing it since she was seven, seven. There's your 10-year overnight success rule. You're going to give away who it is? I have I have a guess. I have, um, I have a couple. Of I can't remember her name. It's the, I mean, it was probably my 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 least virus. Me, baby. Na, 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 oh, I don't know. We got this. Um, we got a song though. We got live karaoke. Live um, karaoke. Yeah, I'm in. The, I mean, Miley Cyrus was that for sure. Like she oh, started she off with Nickelodeon. Yeah, her dad was there, and it still took her ten year overnight success, baby. Well, I think and the, I have a really good way for you to become an overnight millionaire as well. Now, this is proven. I want you to take out a pen. You should take notes. This is your overnight millionaire formula. I forgot who gave it to me. I did not. This is not my original, but I have adopted it with permission. Okay. You ready? Let's go. Three steps. Super simple. Step number one, start with $2 million. Step number two, lose 1 million. Step number three, overnight millionaire. So easy. It's so easy. Right. And it's very straightforward. Like this is not complicated. I think the I think the two things that cause this, because I I always whenever people come on and I end up talking to them, 
um, or I see them at an event that I'm speaking at or any of that. And I end up talking to them. I'm like, you have to think about it. Like the you're thinking, oh, it looks so easy. You put up a website, you run some ads and voila, people buy. But it's like, think about how hard that is. And think about like, I just tell people like, what's a profit margin? Like, tell me how much do you have to run in ads to get a sale? And then they're like, well, I don't know. Don't you just put it out there? And it's like, when you start thinking about it, it's the, the fallacy is because people are like, oh, I see ads all the time on Facebook and I click and I buy that will work when I that's build the psychology that's in that. How they got that ad in front of you, what the ad says, what happens when you click it, what that offer is, what the price mm-hmm. point is there, the colors on your screen and the layout of the text and the font they use have been perfected to a point that you have right. no idea. And that's just e-com, right? That's, that's- just e-commerce. And e-commerce has all of its nuances. And there are people who are Amazon geniuses and there are people who are off Amazon geniuses and there are people who are in businesses that are earning in the multi-million dollars that you never see. They never yep. advertise to you. Those are B2B, those are back-end, those are warehousing, those are all. There is, I love business. I absolutely love and adore it. When I go out and I ask people what they do, <laughs> someone said to me like, oh, why are you judging me? I'm like, no, I love what people do. I'm right. genuinely not like, I get excited. Ooh, is that what you do? And how does that work? And what does that look like for you? And I, I genuinely love it. And this idea of, uh, you know, it's, what's my, one of my favorite examples is I call it the snow cone stand. Yeah. So imagine out walking on a hot summer day and you see someone on the street corner with a snow cone stand and he's got a line around the block. You're like, well, that's easy. Ice, syrup, bucket. Like, this is not hard, right? Cart, whatever. You're like, all right, there's more than enough people for everybody. You decide to open up your own snow cone stand a block away. Same area, selling the same thing. That should work. Open up your snow cone stand, crickets. I don't get it. Because he's not selling snow cones, he's selling icebergs. You have no idea why those people are there and exactly what his flavors are and what they did before that and what he says to them when they come up to him and how he got there and you are missing so much information. All you see is the piece you see, the logo, the website, the ad. You see this one piece, you're like, oh, I could do that. You can, but you're missing the iceberg and you can learn it. It's available. It's accessible. This is what I've dedicated my last 14 years to. You can learn this and you can do it. And you just have to get the pieces that you're missing. That's all. Well, that's the the thing. I think if... If there was a way, I mean, I love, I mean, I love the entrepreneurial spirit and I love the fact that because we live in America, we can just say we do X and this is it and buy it. At the same time, I feel like if people approach entrepreneurship and everybody tells you, like I heard it in the beginning as well, like people grossly overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10. Um, Tony Robbins. Robbins line. I have it on my wall. Yeah. Like. If people got that and there was a five-year rule, like you're saying, like you're going to be in business for three years before you probably break 50K. And then, uh, I mean, you can do it faster. Yes, maybe, no. I'm saying I've got a bunch of people that we launched from zero to 1.2. I did one launch zero to 1.2 million this past year. We did another one zero to three quarters of a but million. It's, it's rare. What I'm saying it's, is like no, normal. It's rare if you don't get the right guidance and you don't know what you're doing. The same way there are people who say you're in business one to five years before you ever break even, before you ever make back your money. And I don't agree with that because it's knowing how to do setting it up right. I remember this woman called me. I can't make these stories up. I mean, I have a good imagination, but I cannot make these stories up. And her business idea, and I never put down a business idea because I think every single business idea is the foundation for the business. Just some need to be fidgeted with to work. Okay. So Mm -hmm. her business idea, she's going to do a niche stock photo website. And let's say her niche was um, uh, hats, right? It was something like extremely specific. Okay. It was a niche stock photo site for hats. She had no experience with photography, with hats, with web development, 
And she expected to make a million dollars in year one because she saw a different stock photo site that had hats and other things and said to herself, you know, if there was one that was just for hats, everyone would go when they're right. looking for a hat. And, and it's not, it's just, it's not that straightforward. It's not that you cannot create a niche stock photo site. What is the need you're filling? Who is the audience? Where is your profit? <laughs> right. Come from? How much of the cost to build, to maintain? What are the moving parts? And this is why we started our consultancy. What are all the different pieces? Because you meet a marketing person and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah we can market that. Like, Wait, but it won't work any money. <laughs> okay. Right. Like, hang on a second. Well, that's that's what I guess I'm getting at. Like, can you do a launch and make a million in your first year? Yes. Will most people do it? Profit. No, because they don't have. No, I do profit. I do profit numbers. My world is the world of profit. When I tell you I took someone from zero to 1.2 million, so that's a 1.2 revenue. Profit was a few hundred thousand after all startup expenses. That was right. money in pocket on year one. Um, but the it's other still one, rare. Also, it's. It's rare because most people never take the time to plan it out. And not every business lends itself to that. But the, everyone how, is capable of building the business they need. And yes, if you, so, you know, here's a great example. I, I mean, I've been on an exercise journey since my teens. I love to move. I love to dance. I took up Latin ballroom in the last year. I took up acro yoga recently. I do hip hop. I love it. And there was a point, I think it was a year or a year and a half ago that I was like, okay, that's it. I'm going to do this. And then I got one of these ads, right? TikTok knew me. It was like, hey, you want this? I'm like, yes, I do. Yes, I do. It was like a lose X pound build tone. It wasn't for me about weight. It was much more about tone. It was like build tone up your BMI in 90 days. And I was like, I'm in. And I did it and I downloaded it. And I I'm a ridiculously disciplined, dedicated person when I have a goal in mind. Every morning, 6 a.m., I'm at the gym, okay? I'm following the diet plan. I'm at the gym. And 45 days into my 90, 50, they redo my BMI. And it's the same. Like, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm not sure if you saw my dedication to this program. I feel like you might have missed it. I dedicated myself to this thing for 45 whole days. And what's missing, right? The custom um, for my body, right? I've had five children. I'm already at a good weight. What am I targeting? What am I missing? Is that the right diet for me? All the testimonials of the people are like, oh. Right. I'm just like, I remember after about 45, 50 days, I was like, are you serious? Are you absolutely, I, I quit. Quit, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. It's got to match you. It's got to match you where you're at. Yeah, my 1.2, 0 to 1.2 million launch with a few hundred thousand profit is a business owner who's on her second business. Right. So She's she got some experience. Business. She's got experience. We used her experience. Plus, I've been working with her as a client for a number of years. We took her other business from stagnation into rebirth. It, and, and this launch was in the works for a year and a half. Now you have some of the iceberg pieces well, that's, and all of those yeah. stories have a piece like that. All these overnight successes. That woman has been in business for almost 20 years. This is her second business. She worked with me. We worked with another expert um, agency team on the launch. Now I've been doing this 14 years. This woman's been in business 20. The other agencies in business, what, seven to 10 years. So she's got experts in her pocket, experts working with her. And she herself is an expert in the general industry, this is a different niche within her general industry. Yeah, that's how you get a zero to one point two million. Okay, I I agree. I think you're correct. I think most people, their first business, their first time out of the bag, I think they're going to have a very hard time. Like, does it happen that people break six figures in year one in profit? Yes, it is rare, especially if it is their rare? first time. If they could, correct. Get if they good could guidance. And, uh, and do it right. And maybe it's not your one. Maybe it's your two. Like I took my business from zero to six figures in under two years with no ad yeah, spend. That's, I think that is definitely business awesome. since I'm 10. I've been running businesses profitably since I'm 10. I went to business school and, and I had a business coach, even though that's what I was doing. Right. 
Okay, so, let's go to yeah. what are your top three tools that you think people need? Maybe it's tools or strategies when they're getting started. If this is their first business and they're looking to get to six figures as fast as possible, what should they be doing? Let's go through the tools that you have. So first thing they need to know is they need to use their swan strength to reach their bees. Okay. Swan is S-W-O-N. And this is how you can promote your business for free. Because if you can't get people to pay you without paying money, you can't get them to pay you with paying money. Right? Paid advertising is fuel on a fire. If you don't have a fire burning already, you're just making a smelly, gassy, wet mess. That's just what happens. Or... Or it takes a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of experts. And if you have that, cool, pour a lot of fuel and eventually someone will come light a spark. Very cool. Um, and so using your swan strength, every entrepreneur I've ever worked with, okay, of hundreds directly and thousands through classes, trainings, has at least one of these four as a primary and usually at least another one as a secondary. Swan is speaking, writing, one-on-one, -on -one, and networking. So if you just want to get started and get out the door before your logo and website, okay, you want to make a logo, you want to make a website, you want to do your social media, go ahead, have fun. It's fine. Okay. And even before that, you can start earning money to pay for your logo and your website by using one of your core strengths to get in front of your bees, where you guys be at, okay, body, eyes, and ears of your audience. So if you're a speaker, that big tent personality, I love speaking. Here I am talking. Yeah, be a guest on podcasts, talk on social media, talk at events, give speeches. That's how I launched my business the first time, second, third, and fourth. I'm on the fourth iteration of my of, of this business journey even. Launched it when I lived in Jerusalem 14 years ago. Launched it again when I moved to Los Angeles. Relaunched it again when I had my fifth kid and I was out of work for six months and came back to like round zero pretty much. Um, and then again in the last year after my divorce. So each time you get to lean on your strength. If you're a writer, write. It's that simple. Now, I don't mean write a blog. It is not 1998. No one's going to find your blog in the middle of nowhere. They're just not. Write for something that already has an audience. Write for medium, write for niche publications, write for other authors, write for other email lists, write for something that's going to get in front of your people. You've got to keep, you're using your strength to get in front of your bees. Where are your people? Don't just write in a vacuum and be like, they're going to find it. If you don't have a plan of how they're going to find it, they're not. So write. I'm going to skip O for a second. And is networking. If you're a networker, network. I met a woman at an event that I was at in, where was I? Denver at a conference. And uh, she was telling me about her real estate business and how, you know, oh, SDU do marketing. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm doing this whole marketing thing and it's really going terrible. And she's doing this whole Facebook groupy thing and she hates it. I was like, okay, what were you doing before that? She's like, oh, I was just networking. So, so why did you stop? She's like, well, because everyone said I had to get on Facebook. I said, but was networking work? She's like, oh, yeah, I love networking. So, so then why? She's like, well, everyone said, well, everyone said, famous last words, right? Well, everyone said, don't do what everyone's do the thing you're really good at. You don't have to change it. And LinkedIn is, I love LinkedIn, right? We have a LinkedIn influencer summit that I co-founded. We're in our fifth year on that. I have LinkedIn training. LinkedIn is a place for networkers. You want to network? Go to LinkedIn. Facebook's not for networkers. Facebook is for friends. <laughs> it's a whole different vibe. So lean on your strength. Now, I meet a lot of people who are like, okay, Bessie, I'm not a speaker, I'm not a writer. I'm not really a networker. I don't like to work a room. I don't like to meet a bunch of strangers. I don't like to get on stages. I don't like to show my face on social. I don't love writing. What do I do? Well, you're a one-on-one. -on -one. What? It means you have deep relationships and deep connections with people. Oh yeah, definitely. Great. Reach out to them. Not with it. I've seen people mess this up so many ways. Not with the like, hey, I'm doing business now. Do you know someone who can hire me? Like, not like that. Right. Okay. Reach out. You have a deep conversation with them. What you're up to. Hey, can we sit down and talk about life for a little while? Can we go out to lunch, dinner, come over, and then talk to them just about what's up, right? And see if there's some way that they can support you. See how you can support them and what they're doing. Explore that deep connection you have. And I will tell you, every single time I have someone who's a primary O, these are people who struggle the most with marketing, I find. Every time they're always in the beginning, like, but I say, I don't have anyone. I'm like, yes, you do. Just think every single time they find someone three stories, just 
Okay. One's from like last year. Um, one of the guys in my program is like, no, 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 I don't have anything. I don't have anything. He's like, oh, wait, a friend of mine has like a few hundred thousand followers on Instagram. And he keeps telling me he would promote me, but I need to build my own Instagram. Don't I? Why? Right. But, but why if you're friends with a few hundred thousand followers who loves you and trusts you and thinks you're awesome and has offered to help you, you're just like, no, that was one. Another one was a woman who had a, and all my examples are real, but I've really the details. If you think you know who I'm talking about, you don't. Um, a woman who had a, a therapy product that she was selling on Amazon, trying to get into the school system. And she's like, I don't have anyone. I don't have anyone. I don't have anyone. I was like, okay, just think who's in your network. Who would want to hear more about what you're up to, what you're doing, who could explore this with you. She's like, oh, I have a relative who works for the board of ed, who keeps offering me to present my product to the board of ed. Is that what you mean, SD? Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I mean. Well, people get those blocks in their head. I, I hear it all the time, too. It, it is one of the craziest things to work around. So, all right, we got, I like, I like that framework because that's easy. Like one of those, there's somewhere there that people can find stuff. What are tips two and three? With two and three. So we've got just a few minutes left. Uh, tip number two, I'll give you to do a five-step plan to go from attention to money. And I'll just outline it. Okay. Some people have three steps. I like five because it helps you break down where something is getting stuck. Awareness, interest, evaluation, negotiation, decision. Now, some people put awareness and interest into attention. I don't. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. Sorry, attention, interest, instead of just awareness, because someone could be aware of you and not care. Right. So how are you getting someone's attention? What are you doing to get them interested once you got their attention? Right? That's usually the content of the thing that got them interested. It's your message typically. And then how are they going to evaluate you? Most people think that a website is their attention tool. Really? It's so going to get in front of someone. Is it walking on legs and going to stand in front of them on their screen by themselves? Like, How are you getting someone's attention? You need to get their attention with your swan strength where they're at. Okay. So there's got to be a way for them to evaluate you. It's a phone call. It's a website. It's a flyer. It's a brochure. I don't care. How are they evaluating you? Um, negotiations on price and then decision is when all of it matches and timing and everything and decision also includes follow-up because the sale is made typically five to seven touch points or 15 to 25 exposures and so understanding that framework and then breaking down any free or paid advertising protocol you're doing into these five parts that is magic for my businesses that are doing over 100k for anyone who's doing anything paid or for anyone who's attempting even a free strategy and wants to know, well, where isn't working? I'm not closing the deals. Great. Let's break it down. How are you getting attention? Are people interested? Where is the hole? Find the hole. There is a path from person to money. You have a solution to someone's problem. They want your solution. Where is the breakdown? So have those five steps. That's another big tool. And, And the third one, what else can I tell you really fast? Um, make sure you're solving a problem. Make sure yourself that this is like super foundational. You can create a problem and then tell people how you solve it. That's harder. It's more expensive. All right. So I told you, I, I study neuroscience, right. consciousness, quantum physics for fun. I read psychology books for fun to get into someone's head enough to tell them they have a problem they didn't think they had and that you solve it. You can do it. It takes longer, it costs more, but you can do it. But to come to someone who knows they have a problem and show them how you can solve it and you can solve it in a way that they like, that they can afford, that works for them, that's much easier and much faster. And so if you want the quick road to success, find my son just came to me last night, last night, my 12 year old. And he's like, okay, ma, I want to start a business. I said, great. What do you want to do? He's like, I want to sell my toys. I said, great. Who wants your toys? He's like, I don't know. So well, who might want your toys? People on the street. Why would they want them? Well, because they're good toys. Like, what problem are you solving with the toys? Who wants to buy them? Oh, because you're a cute kid standing on the street selling toys for a quarter? Cool. I bought those toys, by the way. They were more than a quarter. I'm not sure. I like, like, well, that's, get it? Yeah. The, I mean, the, the amount of people that think that they have to come up with a custom problem because they want to stand out. 
just look at what's selling in the marketplace and do that and do it your way with uniqueness. Mm -hmm. You're going to sell way, way better. Um, Way better. Solve a problem people already know they have. It's it sells so much easier. So I want to go over what you have for people. Again, you right now, if you go to SD star slash free gift, it's in the show notes below. If you're watching this on YouTube, it is in the description. You have a three day marketing challenge there. You also have other free tools for people. I just want to say thanks for coming on. Um, I always enjoy our conversations. Super fun. We we definitely vibe on a lot of the same things. I just want to say thanks for being a great guest. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was super fun. No problem. To everybody else out there, until next time, take action, change lives, and make money. We'll see you soon. Are you looking to scale your business but trying to figure out how to get your message across? Well, go to storyselling.how to grab my free course that will show you how to discover everything that you need to build your business through stories. These stories work, whether it's in social media, email, or public speaking, there are five core stories that you'll learn. You'll be able to use all of them by the time you're done with this course. Again, that is storyselling.how. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to tune in next time.